fourth graders. I'm Mrs. Snyder and this is my son Samuel. As Hello. you probably already know. We are here today to talk about recorders, how to play them and how not to play them. Show us how not to play them. Thank you very much for that demonstration. Uh, first of all is how you hold the instrument. We always put our left hand on the top and our right hand on the bottom. Doesn't matter what hand you write with, that is just the rule. Second, do not, no, not ever, bite the mouthpiece. You only use your lips. Samuel, will you demonstrate? Thank you. I have many recorders with teeth marks on them. And it doesn't matter how clean they are, nobody wants to play a recorder with teeth marks on it. It's gross. Up third is how you blow on the instrument. For a moment, pretend that this finger is a candle, okay? And it's the flame. You don't wanna make it blow out completely, but go ahead and try it. See what it's like when you do that. Now do that into your instrument. Make sure you're not near anybody when you do that. Okay. Yeah, that's why we never do it that way. In fact, it's really great that we're not in class together because then I don't have to hear so much of that. That's the good thing. Anyhow, so, Get your candle flame again. You wanna make it flicker, but not blow out completely. Let's try that in your instrument. Great, and if you blow too softly, it kind of sounds sick, doesn't it? So we have to hit that happy medium. Um, and fourth, if you must squeak, because if you're anything like my son, the first thing he wanted to do was pick it up and make some silly squeaking sounds, please do it in the privacy of your bedroom or somewhere else where you are not near any people. That gets us to something that we call recorder distancing. You might have been hearing a phrase called social distancing right now, but I'm gonna call this part of our video social distancing. Number one, first thing you need to do, oh, Mark, before I go any further with that, I wanted to say this. This is imperative to maintaining a healthy relationship with your family. If uh, you choose not to play the recorder in this way and you do it nearby someone else and you're squeaking and annoying them, don't be surprised if you uh, get grounded, if you get sent on timeout, or if your recorder mysteriously disappears. Number one, do not play in the car. I'm gonna put my recorder down here for a minute. All right, let's say I'm driving along and I don't know that Samuel's taking his recorder out of the bag and he decides to practice. So here I am driving, looking around. I could have just gotten in a wreck. I could have run a red light. Who knows what could happen? And whatever happens though, if something happens to my car, it's gonna get taken out of his allowance. Bum, bum, bum. Second, do not chase animals or siblings or any one of your family members around the house making annoying sounds. Stop it! That's enough, thank you. And number three, if you must practice outside, which some people will say, go outside, go practice there. I won't be able to hear you. Uh, make sure you're at least one half of a mile away from your nearest neighbor, or else you might be getting some unwanted phone calls. And that is my lesson on social distancing with your recorder, AKA recorder distancing. Now really, recorder has a bad name for itself. Lots of people think, ugh, I have to hear my son or daughter play the recorder. But if you play it right, they will actually come to enjoy the sound of your recorder. Thank you and I'll see you soon for another video. Bye.